Hello and welcome to another edition of Community Forum. And yes, this is Joseph Feaster, the host. I don't have my glasses on because in order to read my material after having cataract surgery, I need to be able to have my glasses off because I haven't gotten my new prescription yet. But still, it's going to be a great show. We're going to have a great, uh, have a great guest today. And my guest and I uh, will be discussing the NAACP, better known as the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. More specifically, we'll be talking about a new branch, which my guest is the president of. But before I do, I always like to, on Community Forum, to give folks a history, historical background and to put the conversation in context. So let me do a little bit of that because I want to give some a, a sense of the founding of the NAACP and some things that have going on, who was involved in the early days, and some of the issues that the NAACP addresses. Well, we can actually go back to the race riots in 1908 in Springfield, Illinois, which was the capital of Illinois, but also the birthplace of, uh, of Abraham Lincoln, or not the birthplace necessarily, but in terms of where his hometown was. And that incident precipitated the founding of the NAACP. And in fact, what I found interesting, and I know from the history, that it was three white Americans who actually made, put out the call to gather a number of people together in New York City in order to uh, talk about what was going on in the country and, to, and the question of civil rights. And they were uh, Mary White Ovington, who was a journalist, William English Walling, who was the son of a former slave-holding family, and Henry Moskowitz. They put out a call to about 60 prominent individuals who came together in New York in January of 1909. And uh, it was at that meeting they decided to, uh, to, well, in fact, what they did was they called a meeting on February 12, 1909. And at, that is known as the official date of the founding of the NAACP. In fact, the NAACP was founded on February 12, 1909, but it was incorporated in 1911. As I indicated, it was many white American citizens who were founding of NAACP, as well as the first president, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Story, and I'll have his name right in a moment, as soon as I can read this once again. Uh, but Mr. Story was the first president of the end of, say, Morfield story. And that happened um, at the second uh, annual, annual meeting of the NAACP, which was held right here in Boston. And at that time, the, uh, and the NAACP Boston branch is the first branch of the chartered branch of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, having been incorporated on February 8th, 2012. And the second annual convention of the NAACP was held on, in March of 19, uh, 1911, uh, was, was held at Park Street Church. And the charter that's inscribed for the Boston branch is to uplift the colored men and women of the country by securing to them the full enjoyment of their rights as citizens, justice in all courts, and equality of opportunity everywhere. The NAACP was founded because in the early part of the 20th century, there was anti-lynching campaigns, there was Brown versus Board of Education, voting rights, uh, violence against African Americans was rampant. Now, presently, there are about 2,200 branches, about a half a million members worldwide, uh, as, as with the founders and now with the supporters, it has always been a biracial organization. It is run by a 64 member board. So with that backdrop, the, my guest, who I'm going to introduce now, Reginald Nunnally. And Reggie, thank you for being here uh, today. It's great to see you, as Joe, always. It's always a pleasure. Well, we've, been, we've covered a lot of places and, uh, together, so I want to talk a little bit about, about you. But um, Reggie took the initiative in order to uh, create the Blue Hills, Ave Blue Hill branch, um, NAACP, and I keep wanting to calling it Blue Hills, but that's okay. It's Blue Hill branch, NAACP, which basically talks about here on the South Shore. 
Um, the other thing is just a little bit about Mr. Nunnerly. Uh, we have traveled together on a number of places. He has been the only director, uh, well, one of two directors of the, of, of the Boston Connects. Uh, this was an, uh, an organization in Boston which developed many properties in the, uh, throughout uh, Roxbury, Dorchester, downtown Boston, and South Boston. Uh, he was the uh, and um, he was the director for the Boston Enhanced Enterprise Community. That's when we first came together after he had served as the executive director at the Grove Hall Main Streets, well, Grove Hall um, uh, Community Development Corporation, which uh, created the Grove Hall Mecca, which is there, and a number of other places uh, uh, in in Boston. He served as the executive director of the S S Supplier Diversity Office for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, having been appointed to that position by Governor Deval Patrick. Uh, and I could go on and on, but I would use up all my time talking about all of the great things that you have done employment-wise, but I do want to talk a little bit about um, some of the boards and advisory boards that you sat on. You sat, you, you sit on the Boston Local Development Corporation loan program for the, the Boston Redevelopment Authority, which is now known as the Boston Planning and Development Agency. You served uh, as a chairperson of the Economic Development Committee of the New England Area Conference NAACP, uh, Massachusetts Gaming Commission Vendor Advisory Board, Department of Transportation Disadvantaged Business Enterprise Advisory Board, and now president of the Blue Hill NAACP branch. So it is evident, Reggie, and like I said, we've been associated with each other so long in so many ways, both organizationally and in terms of the work that we've done, that you are committed to economic development, uh, su sustaining of communities, and helping people. So having you be uh, the president of this new branch and in fact invited me to be a charter member of the branch uh, was very heartwarming uh, particularly since of my end of ACP history of having been a president in Boston um, what tell us a little bit about when you started it what was the impetus for that and some of the process for uh, for, for opening a branch Sure, Joe, but first of all, I want to really thank you uh, and your fantastic crew here for uh, inviting me onto the show uh, because, as you said, uh, we've got a long history in terms of working together and some of the things that uh, we've done over the, the last 20 plus years uh, has been really sustained because it was about economic development. It was about uh, wealth creation. Uh, so, you know, once again, I want to thank you for inviting me onto your show. Uh, when it, in terms of establishing the NAACP in the Blue Hill uh, uh, area, uh, this actually was a two-year process. Uh, okay. And it first started uh, when uh, I was doing some work for Deval Patrick uh, within the Supply Diversity Office. And I had gotten contacted by a number of black businesses in the Randolph area. Mm -hmm. And they were very interested in trying to determine, you know, how could they grow their, their business. So at that time, I was able to garner some resources to help them in terms of getting them some, some technical assistance as well as access to capital. Uh, when I retired uh, in 2015, it became evident that not only were there black businesses in Randolph, but there were black businesses in the South Shore that really needed this information. Uh, as you recall, when we sat on and did work with the enhanced enterprise community, there were a number of uh, uh, projects that we were involved in. Uh, the, the Mecca Mall, uh, the two hotels, one of them was black owned, uh, first one in almost 100 years in the Roxbury area, South End Health Center, uh, the Merengue restaurant that became a destination location for uh, the D Dominican uh, uh, professional ball players, uh, the Library Center in South Boston, uh, and at the end of the day... And the Fish Pier. And the Fish Pier, absolutely. Yes. yes. You know, and at the end of the day, you know, folks can forget uh, you know, who may have been involved in that process. We got to get a plaque up there, Rich. I'm sure we do. <laughs> but one thing they can't forget 
is that the, you know, there was over 1,000 jobs that were created. Uh, that means there were 1,000 people that didn't have jobs that now have jobs. There, it means that places that were passed through communities now become destination uh, points. And regardless of what happens, you know, between 1996 and 2036, uh, that will remain and somewhere in the annals of uh, that documentation, they'll find our names. And I'm sure as, as, as time goes by, uh, the owners of those uh, projects uh, uh, will be happy that they had an interaction between us. Um, but moving forward, uh, I have a passion around economic development in terms of wealth creation. And we really started taking a look at how can, how can I continue that, that process and looked at the opportunity of creating a NAACP branch on the, on the South Shore. And uh, I researched the, the process, uh, and we needed to have uh, at least 100 members, uh, paid members. Uh, we needed to be able to uh, document that and make a request to the national organization to uh, vote on our uh, on our branch. Uh, and we really took the slow process because I do believe it's really important to understand all of the inner workings of the NAACP as well as the communities in which we were going to try to serve. Uh, Boston uh, and Brockton and the Blue Hill branch is in between. And many of the people that have joined uh, may have a, a little higher educational background. Uh, clearly, uh, their career paths have uh, been more on the, uh, on the positive trajectory. And, you know, most of them, or a great many of them, own their own homes. Let's talk about, just want to drill down just a little bit, because you said you're in between the Boston branch and the Brockton branch. There are several communities that are there. What, what uh, comprises the uh, geographic area sure. for the Blue Hill? There are five, there are, there are five towns. Uh, there's uh, Milton, uh, there's, there's Canton, Stoughton, Randolph, Sharon, uh, those five c communities. Uh, they each probably have approximately 30,000 people, uh, which gives us a geographic area of about 150,000 uh, people. And approximately, uh, the people of color represent, believe it or not, 18 to 20 percent of the population overall in, in those communities. Randolph being one of the bigger, and Stoughton now starting to uh, increase uh, the population in terms of people of color. Now, what I said from the, uh, uh, again, and I'll, I'll come specifically back to you, but I'm going to be going back and forth yeah. because there's always that historical nexus that happens with any organization. If you don't know your history, uh, you're, you're bound to uh, repeat the bad that's, thing. That's right. Um, I said from the outset that there is, has always been a biracial relationship right. um, and in the formation, operation, the early presidents, as I said, was one Morfield Story. There was uh, uh, the executive secretary, Walter White. Um, you know, so there has always been. But, and I reference this because most people would just think that the NAACP was just uh, black people, African Americans, colored people, whatever you, uh, vernacular they would like to use or description they'd like to use, and want to dispel that that's just not the case. You just talked about, when you talked about the population within those five areas of uh, five communities of being close to approximately 30,000, I know we have 29 to 30,000 uh, here in Stoughton, you talked about everybody. That's right. You didn't make any distinction. You pointed out that, yes, the African-American population may be about 18 percent, but when you looked at it, your grab, if you will, or your potential membership comes from the entire community. That seems to be consistent with the historical aspects of oh, the NAACP. Absolutely. You know, one Let's of the first people that. That, that joined uh, was a town manager for, for Randolph, David Murphy. Yes, I know David. David. And we, we approached uh, David uh, and told him about the concept. You know, we weren't a branch at the time, you know. We said we wanted to include Randolph, you know. And he, with open arms, you know, said, absolutely, how could he be helpful? 
And, you know, beyond some other negotiating things, we said you could become a member. Uh, so David was one of the very first uh, folks. He was, he, was, he was the white town manager. And again, Joe, it really is for everybody. You know, we couldn't operate in a, in a society where you, 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 you tend to just isolate yourselves. You know, uh, the, the Blue Hill branches is, is about partnerships. It's about providing the information to everybody. Now, we will have a focus uh, on, on people of color, but absolutely everyone is uh, welcome to uh, participate. And if they didn't want to join, they could send me their, their information so that we can keep them abreast of some of the activities that's going on in the, uh, in the area, particularly around access to capital, uh, purchasing uh, homes, uh, getting technical assistance and financial literacy for some of the young people. You know, I, and again, I because of my familiarity with NAACP and you and history, I, I, I wouldn't want to leave the impression that the Blue Hill branch will simply be dealing with economic development because its, um, its mandate is much broader than that. Yes. Uh, you know, NAACP deals with legal redress. NAACP is as interested in people receiving health care. NAACP is interested in the voting rights. NAACP. So it's, while again, your, your focus personally is economic development, that's just one piece of what the NAACP can do, and that's why we can be helpful to a band of people beyond any particular constituency, yeah, we right. can do that because of the broader reach of what the branch can do. Oh, so absolutely. the branch will be looking at all of those areas. We'll be looking presume. at the five game cha changes, you know, one, one is which is education, uh, 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 criminal reform, uh, and, and clearly health uh, services. We, we, we look at those as absolutely being critical to the, to the overall mission of the NAACP on the national level. And we'll be looking at that, you know, and sort of on the, on the local uh, basis. One of the things that when we were surveying people uh, in these five towns, uh, folks really were very much interested in not so much how they were going to uh, move forward uh, from an economic perspective, but how their kids and how their grandkids. Uh, as you know, Joe, over the years, uh, the millennials are gonna be probably one of the first generations that might not be able to make as much as their parents. Yes. Uh, you know, then many of them are living home uh, and many of them are trying to figure it out. You know, and I, I, I think that, you know, one, one, of, one of the things that we're attempting to do is to try to attract those individuals into becoming either members or just participants. Uh, I, I've talked to a number of the millennials and the first thing that they ask me is, what's in it for me? <laughs> you know. And Sounds just <laughs> like the millennials answer. <laughs> you know, and you I know. I want it today. I want it today <laughs> and, I, and I want it right now. <laughs> oh, that's right. You know, and you know, so one of the things that we've been having a discussion about was on wealth creation. You know, and that was one of the things that really sort of interested folks, you know. Uh, even some of the young kids that we've talked to, you know, that were juniors and seniors in high school, you know, when we talked to them about establishing a budget, do you know how to do it? You know, and folks just kind of like looked at us and said, well, you know, if, if we have some money and we see something, we get it. And if we don't have it, we ask our parents. <laughs> You know, and I says, well, it, it might be good if you could kind of plan out and sort of make some projections, you know, and they said that they, 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 they had not been taught that in, in school and they don't have time, you know, as, as all of us uh, to, to listen to our parents and tell us for planning because the parents have already planned that out for them, you know. So there is, we, we saw a great interest in that. And we wanted to try to figure out exactly how, how, do, how do we reach out, how do we touch those individuals. We brought this up at the, the, uh, the conference in uh, San Antonio this year. And I know that the NAACP uh, has the majority of their members are, are over 60. And they're looking to infuse more young people. And the young people, they, they, they already have the, the right to vote. They, they need to use it more. 
uh, you know, so a lot of the things that the NAACP fought for in the, in the 40s, 50s, 60s, and going into the 70s, uh, they, they don't know much about. You know, what they know about is, is right now and how a organization could, could impact them. What I find interesting about the focus going towards and our younger folks, because there's also the youth division of NAACP, yes. uh, and you can get youth memberships and, and all the ages uh, uh, in between. But what I found uh, historically interesting is the most recent Pre executive directors of the NAACP, and in fact, some of the chairpersons of the board have been younger than that. And I can tell you, when we had the convention here in 1982, they weren't 60. <laughs> they, <laughs> you may have averaged it out, <laughs> but they were kind. they were much senior, much more senior than that. So. I think a lot of, you know, being the largest and the oldest venerable civil rights organization, we got to keep up with the times, otherwise we are going to uh, find ourselves being strictly in the history book. Well, Joe, that is why I am thanking you uh, for allowing me to come on your show. Uh, because, <clears throat> you know, as, as well as I do, and probably better than I do, because you were the, the president of uh, the Boston branch. Uh, that things that worked back in the, in the 60s and the 70s and the early 80s just don't work today. You know, uh, the world is moving faster. We've got all kind of social media uh, and things of that nature. Folks don't want to go to meetings, uh, you know, and spend a couple of hours, uh, and they want to know what the relevancy is. And we've got to figure out different ways of reaching people. Uh, and it can't just be to the membership. Uh, I met with uh, Andrew Ward, uh, uh, Jubilee Church. He, he oversees the church uh, business activities. Was just with Andrew this past Sunday at Bethel. Baptist. Okay, and we talked about <laughs> and we talked about you at our meeting just recently. Yeah. And one of the things that we really talked about was you really have to to grow. You just can't use the the Jubilee name. You can't use the the NAACP name and just assume that people are just going to jump on board. You really have to, on a continual basis, uh, uh, indicate your, revel uh, your relevancy to uh, the, the general public. Let's, just to talk about Andrew. Andrew, you know, is a Stoughton resident, for yes, one. Yes, he is. Uh, and what we were doing, uh, and consistent with what you were talking about, the financial literacy piece, et cetera, we were, uh, we were asked for pastors uh, Ray and Gloria Hammond mm -hmm. uh, at Bethel, I said Bethel Baptist, I meant to say Bethel AME, mm -hmm. uh, to come and speak to some of their congregants about estate planning and financial planning. That's right. And, you know, I always find that conversation very illuminating when you uh, have that conversation with folks to find out the level of lack of knowledge that most people have about both, both of those That's things. Right. Andrew, because he does financial planning, I was looking at it from the, from the lawyer's part about what you do with your assets for those, who, those loved ones that you want to leave things for and how do you do that in a very comprehensive and planned way. And even those things, are things, again, under the, under the banner of the Blue Hill Branch and the WACP are programs that we can offer because oh, absolutely. many people out there, because part of that relationship in both those instances is one of trust. And if we can bring it under the umbrella of the, uh, of the Blue Hill Branch, that can be another vehicle for, uh, you know, attracting some people to participate. Oh, absolutely. You know, and you know, I had a wonderful meeting with Andrew, mm -hmm. you know, first of all. And it looks like, uh, you know, we're on, on that pathway of really uh, creating a partnership uh, in the Stoughton area. Uh, Joe, you, you know, when we go way back, you, you can't do these things by yourself. That's right. You know, uh, so partnerships are, are, are very important. Uh, to me, because it means that you don't have to be the only one that's doing it. You can kind of segment out things so that everyone is sort of involved and it doesn't seem to be so much heavy lifting. Uh, so we've, we, we, we've partnered with the uh, Stoughton uh, Diversity and Inclusion uh, uh, Committee, uh, headed up by uh, Deborah Roberts. Uh, we're a, a, a partner in what we call this literary uh, 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 essay contests. 
yes. for folks and the young people in the, in the Stoughton area from the grades 6 through, through 12. You know, and, and one of the things that the Blue Hill branch had indicated was is that we wanted to go beyond just having somebody say what the value uh, of uh, Martin Luther King's life was. Uh, and we wanted to insert uh, some financial literacy in there. You know, and so the Blue Hill branch actually indicated to the Stoughton uh, Diversity and Inclusion Group that we will put up some financial resources if we can include financial literacy in this contest. You know, okay. so, you know, and, and, and I know I haven't heard the results of their meeting the, the other night, but, you know, they were very interested in uh, uh, trying to figure out how they could get that done so that we could put some more money on top of the table. Well, that's called putting your money where your mouth is. Well, that's is. right, you know. <laughs> and, you know, and any time that you're talking about, uh, any time that you're talking about uh, financing and funds and, and the exchange of that, you're going to get people to listen. And I find that with uh, young people as well, you know. And just to give you an example, I was trying to get a volunteer to shoot some pictures of one of the events that we had uh, some time ago. And it was very difficult, you know. I eventually found somebody. I thought about that and said, gee, you know, the focus is on economic development, making money. And I went from volunteer to pay. And I offered uh, photographers under 30 uh, an opportunity to take the pictures for $125 an hour. You were inundated with I got a <laughs> list. <laughs> That's right. I got a list. And I approached it from a real business point of view. It was, we can hire you for two hours, not all day, two hours, to deliver me some, some pictures. And I will pay you the $250 when you give me the pictures. There you go. You know, I got the pictures the next day. <laughs> the following day, I wrote a check for $250. You know, I get calls on a monthly basis oh, wanting to know, else? you got anything else? <laughs> you know, and I, and I, believe, I believe in that because mm -hmm. uh, today, with life just moving so fast, that people have to really choose between what it is that they do and what they, what they can, you know, give in terms of their time. And, and people's time, regardless of what age you are, it is very valuable. Well, I hope that Roy Cohen, my executive producer, is listening to that, uh, this dialogue that we just had about the payments because uh, uh, we may have to have another type of conversation <laughs> at the conclusion of this particular program. So. Well, that would be great. And if, and if we can help spare that, <laughs> yeah. uh, that is great. Oh, in terms you of, know. I know I would like it, Leo and others would like it as well. But, mm -hmm. but, but I, I say that very... Uh, Tongue in cheek, uh, because when you volunteer, you're giving of your time for something that you appreciate and like to do. And just like you, uh, folks, NAACP presidents, branch presidents do not get paid. Just let's make it very, very right. clear. There's no exchange of dollars that come here. All the years of service we're involved with has nothing to do with this is a labor of love and That's commitment. Right. So I just want to be able to say that, yes, you can volunteer, but I agree with you. My motto, whenever I have anything with business, I'm paying. I'm paying because then I, then I can control That's right. the product and, or, and most of the time, the outcome. That's right. Through, the, through that tender of funds puts but, me in the driver's seat. You can't, you can't hold anybody accountable if you're not paying them. That's right. You know, you it's difficult. Clearly, yeah, it's, it's a very some difficult. Some people have accountability because they, that's just what we do. Others, others no. do not, you know, and when you, when, when you weigh it, you know, you have an opportunity to, to, to volunteer and then you have an equal opportunity to make $250 for a couple of hours, you know, that begins to, yeah. that weight <laughs> begins to shift, you know, and oh, yeah. I'll explain it to <laughs> the guy that wants me to volunteer why I couldn't make it, yeah. you know. Well, and more importantly, if we, uh, I know as with me, if you go home and say, I turned down two hundred fifty dollars <laughs> to volunteer. Right, you know <laughs> that's going to be a different yeah. type of conversation at home. So, <laughs> so I would say, you know, going back to you know that original question, where you know where, when did we start? You know, we started back in uh, two thousand and seventeen. You know, trying to put all this together, 
we got it approved in February of 2018, and folks will say, what have you been doing? You know, and, and, and I have to say is that we've been busy. We haven't been very visible, but we've been really vis uh, busy uh, putting together a strategic plan, you know, for 2019, and then looking at how can we, from a business perspective, raise some capital to actually operate you know, an NAACP branch on the, on, the, on the South Shore, particularly into 2019. And that was my meeting with, uh, with Andrew and, and Deborah uh, about, you know, how can we all work together and take a look at some things that we have in common and then work to those, to those goals. So far, uh, everyone that have, we have reached out to has been in agreement that uh, they want to be able to focus on uh, economic development, wealth creation, purchasing homes, the accessing capital, if for no other reason, just to understand how do you go about doing that. You know, estate planning. You know, when you take a look at this, 400 of the wealthiest individuals in America make more money than the entire black population and one third of the Hispanic population. And I'm talking about those 400 individuals make $1.3 trillion. And that's more than the yeah. millions of black and brown people that are in this country that spend $1.175 trillion on, a, on an annual basis. What I want, you know, and, and what I want to capsulize this, because again, Part of this process of having this program is to educate folks. What you're saying is nothing new. No. But what you are doing, you're a catalyst for trying to gather folks together on a mission to address particular concerns. That's right. The concerns that have been there, the issues have been there, everything that you've talked about yeah. has been there. But it's just like, you know, something in the forest. It's just been laying there on the ground. No one decided to pick it up and to take it to the next level. Right. So I don't want to minimize. In fact, I want to lift up and, 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 and applaud you taking this on. You, now, you said you retired. I almost started to laugh because <laughs> uh, I've known you too long. Don't yeah. it, I would describe it as you left that particular right. in, uh, you know, employment opportunity to take on this volunteer <laughs> opportunity. That's how I would describe knowing you as you, as you are. Um, but that's what it takes because see a lot of folks, they rather golf, they rather watch TV, they rather go on vacations and I'm not denigrating yeah. any of that. But like I said, knowing you as I do, you have chosen to take up this mantle because I can't see you sitting in front of the TV. I can't see you golfing all the time. I don't know if you are a golfer, but the reality is because of your other commitments, you would undertake something such as this yes. opportunity to begin yeah. to start a branch. And that's, that's historic itself. You're in the annals now in terms of you're a, well, a founder of a branch, and thank you for having me as a charter well, member. And, and, and I will <laughs> tell you, you know, we reached out, and we didn't just reach out in, in, in those five towns. You know, yeah. we have members from San Diego, uh, Nevada, Chicago, uh, and as close to home as Rhode Island. You know, and uh, many of them are, are my friends and some sure. of them are my relatives that tend to think the same way as, as I think and think that that is a good way to, to go and they were willing to contribute uh, not only financially, but intellectually. You know, so we have members that say, Reg, I can't commit to you that I'm coming to any meetings. You sound like me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But as a member, I can help by doing some of the things that I do on a routine basis, i.e. this show, you know, i.e. A, uh, um, my, my former roommate has a show down in, uh, in the Hingham area. Uh, my uh, good friends out in San, San Diego, you know, say, hey, look, if you need some help around uh, uh, writing certain briefs for the NAACP, count me in. Uh, 
you know, so we look at all of the different ways that people can really participate to really help out the folks in the, in, in the area. Well, I think that's consistent with what you said earlier, finding different ways yeah. in which to meet folks where they are. There's a, the exchange of resources, there's uh, exchange of intellectual properties, there's exchange of, uh, of, of, of physical involvement, there's a, range, there's, there's a place for everybody. But what I want to do is, because I want to give uh, our sponsors an opportunity sure. to be highlighted, but when I come back, I want to I uh, dwell into, you know, more in the sense of, because I'm, in, I'm into in this case, organization building, nation building is another one, but mm -hmm. organization, I wanna talk about the process so people know that if they have been inspired by what you have said here today, how they can become a member of the Blue sure. Hill brand. So we're gonna to go to our sponsors and we'll be right back. Hi, it's Gary LaPierre and the crew wants to thank mm, 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 Maxie's Delicatessen. That's at 117 Sharon Street in Stoughton. They're 781-341-1662. American Cancer Society, yes, they're looking for volunteers, drive cancer patients to and from their treatments. 1-800-ACS-6662, or just go to www.cancer.org. Ilsa Marks Food Pantry in St. Anthony's Free Market, 2 Park Avenue in Stoughton. For more information, call Christine Gallagher. That's at 781-341-0611 or 781-341-0549. Meals on Wheels, just ask for Jessica. You'll find her at 781-344-8882, extension two. Stoughton Penny Saver, our business is advertising your business, they tell us. 27 Rose Glen Street, Stoughton, 781-344-4833. Community Forum Showtimes in Stoughton. It's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at 6 p.m., Monday at 8 p.m., Tuesday at 5 p.m. It's on Comcast Channel 9 and Verizon Channel 28. All comments and suggestions welcome. Contact us at communityforum1 at yahoo.com. Samaritans, they're at 41 West Street on the fourth floor in Boston, 02111. Their phone number is 617-536-2460. 24-hour helplines for Samaritans, and the number is 877-870-HOPE. That's 877-870-4673. Samaritans, you can find them at 800-252-TEEN. That's 252-8336. Or find them online at SamaritansHope.org. Yes, this is the Blue Hill Branch NAACP president is my guest today, Reggie Nunnerly. Um, and as you see, you can contact him at rnunnerly21 at gmail.com or by phone at 617-504-2776. To, oh, yes, bingo, Sunday. Oh, is that Sunday? Oh, Monday night bingo. I told you these glasses needed to be on. <laughs> uh, Monday night bingo at Avatora Congregation, located at 1179 Central Street here in Stoughton. The doors open at 4.30 p.m. Game starts at 6.30 p.m. Bring your friends, bring your money, have a good time, take home the winnings. Get Fresh, Stoughton's own cooking show. Now episodes airing. On, or they say new episodes, but it's been around for a while, but episodes are airing now on Comcast Channel 9, Verizon Channel 28 on Mondays at 5.30 p.m. or 6.30 p.m. I'm not sure my glasses are, 5.30 p.m. Wednesdays at 8 o'clock p.m., Thursdays at 9 o'clock p.m., and Fridays at 5 o'clock p.m. Well, I tried my best, Reg, in terms of, I, I can't wait till I get my new prescription. Uh. So that I can, I keep telling folks I got bionic eyes now, so watch out. Uh, you know, so, uh, but as I said before uh, the break, what I wanted to do was let's, let's talk now about the organizational aspect. We've talked about some of the priorities and we can come back to that because you may <laughs> want to elaborate on a few other things. We talked about the process of how you got to form the Blue Hill branch, uh, NAACP. We talked about the communities that are involved. Uh, we talked about Randolph and Avon and, uh, and Stoughton 
and Sharon and Canton in terms of the community. We talked about that comprising about 150,000 plus persons. Um, you know, we talked about how to get folks engaged. We talked about it from the standpoint that the, even though the name is the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, it really should be NAAAP for all people, all people because that has been the history of the NAACP fighting for civil rights and what is right in this country. But now we said there was a, a donut in the coverage for the NAACP and you have now filled that donut hole. And so what, uh, how can one and what, become a member of the Blue Hill branch of the NAACP? Well, becoming a member is, is very simple. Uh, you could email me uh, at that address, rnunnally21 uh, at gmail.com. It's a one-page uh, application form. Uh, uh, the cost is $30 uh, to become a member. Uh, and that's annual membership, is that That's right? annual membership. Now, you can become a sustaining life member. You can become a sustaining life am. member. You are one. <laughs> yes. You know? And, uh, but I don't want folks to really feel as if they've got to join to be a participant. We want you to join. But if there's some reason why, you know, you, you know in terms of financially that you, you couldn't, I still want you to get in contact with me because I want to put you on our list. I want to make sure that you get the type of information that's going to help you uh, uh, move your life, your life forward. Uh, absolutely, we, we want to try to grow the membership, but I don't want, you know, the, the, the $30 or, the, or the, the, the lack of finances uh, impede your involvement. Let me do this. I, I, I just want to raise this because uh, I, I, I don't want folks to, to have a takeaway to say, you can be serviced by the NAACP even if you are a non-member. I just want to be able to make yes. that clear is uh, not granted. It, it's helpful for the NAACP operationally to be able to service its members and also to help them financially. So, but if you have an issue, a legal redress, you have a question, you have a concern, you feel you've been discriminated against, you can always call an NAACP, and in this case, it is the Blue Who Branch uh, NAACP. Um, but if you are you going to be able to have, because I don't know, that is that your private <laughs> phone number <laughs> for now? Well, that's going to be the NAACP uh, number. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, okay. It's my private number no, right now. Not. But uh, <laughs> like, like I said earlier, we spent uh, a great deal of time over this uh, 2018 trying to get the organizational structure in place. But I, I do want people to be able to get in contact with me. Uh, it would be better if you texted me or emailed me, you'll get a quicker response uh, because a, a great deal of the time I don't, uh, I don't really pick up the phone uh, because we do get a lot of calls. Uh, and we've gotten calls you know, in terms of what we call uh, some racial discriminations right off the bat uh, and harassments. Uh, we got involved in the political process when we thought that there was an individual that was uh, what we call not a good individual running for selectment. Yeah. Oh, yeah. the insensitive uh, picture? Yes. Okay. Well, you know, right. Yes, and, I recall and, that. And, you, and yeah. I would say that, you know, the NAACP would like to take some credit, not exclusively, but uh, we did put a campaign on to try to get as many of the members and the many numbers of people living in the Stoughton area uh, just to get to vote, whether they voted for the individual or not. Uh, and we know that we were able to get in contact with uh, probably just a little over 200 uh, uh, of uh, the folks that we knew. And, and we'd like to say that, you know, uh, the, 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 the individual lost or the individual that won uh, one by 200 volts. <laughs> well, you know. that's, that's, that's simple math to me. <laughs> that's simple math, you know. So we like to think of, you know, uh, of uh, trying to have an impact. Uh, we had an in, uh, 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 interracial couple get in contact with us, you know, and it was about a, uh, a, they were being harassed uh, because they were an interracial couple. And this, they, were, they were an older group. They were over 65 years of age and being harassed by a much younger 
uh, individual. And we found out uh, where the individual worked. And uh, we got in contact with the employer to try to understand if they condoned <laughs> that type of activity, mm -hmm. you know. And we weren't trying to impact that individual's job. We just thought that yeah, having a discussion with the individual uh, might be able to resolve the issue. Uh, they did, and the issue was resolved. Uh, you know, so we, we encourage people to get in contact with us with, with whatever the issue might be. You know, if you, in some cases, if you're just looking for you know, some, some, some information on what bank you might want to talk to. Uh, we're, we're, we will be involved with uh, the 11 or, 11 or 12 banks that are in the Stoughton area. We've done the research. Uh, we understand exactly where they are. Uh, we will be sending out a uh, notice, uh, you know, that we would like them to become partners, you know, with us. Not to just merely contribute. We want to have a business arrangement with them. Something similar that we're doing with uh, the Dunkin' Donuts uh, that's located in Canton in our backyard. Uh, we met with them and we had indicated to them that we would like them to be a participant. And they immediately said, tell us what you, you need in terms of a contribution. And I said, well, I don't want a contribution. I want you to be my business partner. We want to earn what it is that uh, you're contributing to. You know, so let's put together a, a scope of services. Let's come up with that number and see how we can get some of the employees to become members and then how we can benefit Dunkin' Donut, you know, in terms of some of the things that it's trying to do. You know, and, and, and again, I, I just want to underscore because many would be walking away feeling that there has to always be an adversarial relationship between the NAACP and others, and that's just not the no. case. I think that uh, what earlier was you stated about the accumulation of wealth, um, financial literacy, as education, there are also the, um, uh, I say, the affirmative steps of trying to be helpful to persons. Now, there's always, the, there's always a carrot and stick in any type of relationship. At, there are times when people need to be brought to court or chastised because of their actions. That's right. And NAACP is capable of doing that. But in the same token, we can be helpful programmatically, we can be helpful in terms of uh, if employers need employees. We can be helpful in terms of trainings. There are those types of things that the NAACP can do as well. Well, absolutely, Joe. And you know, we, you and I, were recently involved in uh, was the the, the uh, communities of color organization. Uh, in terms of trying to help them structurally, in terms of the organization, how did how did they really move forward? They had some great ideas, but uh, organizationally they weren't structured. Uh, we, we could do up to a a point, uh, you know, because it really was a, a great deal of work. But we did give them that technical assistance, you know, in terms of actually writing uh, the uh, bylaws, uh, applying for uh, their 501c3. Uh, and uh, we're, we're, we're in a similar situation now out in Stoughton uh, with the uh, diversity and inclusion group, you know, steering them in the direction of some financial resources, uh, helping them with their, with their bylaws and things of that their nature. So absolutely, uh, it doesn't always have to be an adversary. It can be a partnership, a real partnership on how to move people forward as opposed to staying still and sort of fighting each other. And yes, there will be times when uh, we need to put on the gloves and uh, uh, you know, test each other's uh, fortitude. <laughs> uh, but uh, I think overall, mm -hmm. uh, you know, particularly in these towns, uh, and particularly when people hear NAACP, they think of it as a black organization. And you're absolutely right. This is an organization for everybody. You know, everyone is trying to figure out how to move forward as quick as they can, you know. And everybody understands, I won't say understands, I will say heard of estate planning. But when you get below the what I heard 
to actually understanding what that means and how that becomes the transference of wealth from one generation to the next, it, 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 you, 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 you can find out exactly how many people really understand that. Oh yeah, and uh, you know, it's amazing. That, that's not my principal area of practice, but I am familiar with it, and it's just astounding. Um, you know, I always use, when I um, do these sessions, I always say, well, you need to think like the Kennedys, how you do that uh, transference of wealth, how you maintain wealth within a family for traditions. That's right. And on and on and on in generations. Um, and majority of people don't even know that that's a possibility. Right. It gets back to what the young people said to you. I got a dollar, I spend a dollar. If I don't have a dollar, I ask my parents. <laughs> well, right. that's how some people estate plan. Yeah. And so again, we're talking about if we can just raise awareness, we may not deliver the service, but we can be a conduit to get folks to service that they may need well, that's right. and thinking outside the box. Well, Joe, you know, think, think about this, you know, Joe Kennedy, you know, and I had the pleasure of, uh, before he left Congress, having a conversation with him, you know, and I, and I really wanted to know, because I didn't know, you know, how do you, how'd you make your money? You know, and he said, I made it the easy way. I inherited it. <laughs> you know, and I said, oh, <laughs> you know, and he said, yeah, he says, the, the key for him and for a lot of other people is how do you manage it once you've got it? You know, because like you said, you got a dollar, you spend a dollar. You know, at the end of the day, you got zero dollars, you know. And at the end of the day, you want to have something so that eventually you can pass it on to the next generation. I got to thank you, you know, because, uh, you know, I'm sure there were other attorneys that I could have used. But being able to change my deeds around you know, so that my, my children, you know, won't have to go through, you know, a lot of the probate, you know, that it's a seamless opportunity for them, you know, and now that they see that their name is on there, that they have some ownership, they're willing to listen a little <laughs> bit harder to how do I manage this? You right. know, now I know, oh, you mean you tell me that I got to help pay the taxes on the properties. So, oh, you mean I got to, you know, figure out how to clean these? I didn't, I didn't know I had, I thought that was go, you were going to do that, <laughs> right. you know? So, you know, just that whole education process and that step forward, well worth the money, uh, and it begins to let the next generation know that there's something coming down the pike, and you got to learn how to manage that so that you're able to transfer that to the next, to the next generation. And I, again, I want to do two things. One is, I had Andrew on the show previously. He's, he's appeared on this program. In fact, interesting enough, after we did the program last Sunday, mm -hmm. uh, it popped up on Facebook, you know, the picture from when we did the show here. So we're gonna have to get a picture oh, with you and me too, so we have to do it. But again, if one, were look, if one went back 30 years and was listening and said, uh, we're talking about the NAACP and what you're talking about, economic development, transference of wealth, accumulation of wealth, they'll say, NAACP, that's not their issues. Right. That's not the things that they do. They want to deal against racism and uh, uh, voting rights uh, issues and, you know, uh, lynchings, and they want to deal with all of these types of issues. Well, this is what you said you want to deal with the millennial age, and this is the conversation, so if you're going to be able to influence their participation, you are going to have to be able to tell them, uh, speak a new, a, a, a new lingo, a new language, a new approach. And I think f folks listening, I want to make it clear to you, yes, this is still the NAACP. We still deal with our bread and butter issues. But the reality is we have to shape our message and, and, and enhance the tools in the toolbox in order to continue moving on. Reggie, we're having such a great time here. Our time is moving on, so we only have a few short minutes. So I'm going to leave and I'm going to be quiet.
except to close out, but I want to give you an opportunity for some uh, parting message you want to leave it of. Well, uh, you know, I want to reiterate, you know, that message uh, to, to the listening audience is that the, the, this is what we're really looking at in terms of the new NAACP. And in terms of what that focus might be and who the focus is really on. Uh, when you take a look at, you know, the population in the uh, Blue Hill branch area, uh, you know, and a lot of people will say, well, you know, I, I've got my own home and I got a fairly decent job or I'm retired and I've got a little nice little nest egg put aside. But we're really saying, hey, you know, w what about your what about your, your children that might be, you know, still living in your in your home that uh, need uh, some additional uh, resources or an avenue to get those resources and we're, we'd like to be able to say not just the NAACP but the, the NAACP and all the partners that it hopes to bring to the table in 2019 are going to be part of the answer. And if you, can, if you can see your way forward to contributing your time, uh, your money, or in your efforts, uh, we certainly would appreciate it. Well, Reg, couldn't have done a better summation. I want to thank you for appearing on the program today. As always, I want to thank the folks who uh, make this happen here at the, at the station. Um, the, um, the head of the organization, Michael Hammond, Jeff Pickett, uh, Leo McGowan, who is make sure that we look good on camera and takes care of making sure we are here on the program uh, uh, being filmed, C.J. Mullen, uh, oh, that inimical uh, Roy Cohen, my executive producer, and of course, Dave Young, who does so many things besides doing a program, does much in terms of editing. We have a full team here. I want to have you back in the future, but hopefully uh, our viewing audience that you've got an education about the NAACP, please support Reggie Nunley and the Blue Hill branch of the NAACP. Have a great day. <laughs>